Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of... Wait. You're laughing with me, right? Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. So, unless you've been living under a rock, or more likely you just don't give a shit about film photography in the first place, you've probably heard about Cinestill launching a new color negative film stock called 400D. And yeah, the D doesn't stand for what you think it does. Herbert. It actually stands for dynamic. Cinestill has been making waves in the film community for the past few blood moons with stocks like 800T, 50D, and BWXX, which I'm constantly told is the sleeper hit of the century for black and white film. The launch for the next stock in their portfolio came on a day that photography historians will soon be calling the great film photography glow up. A day where Kodak announced gold was coming to 120, Japan Camera Hunter announced a new 400 speed slide film, and of course Cinestill announced the campaign for this film stock. But here's where your Gucci might get tingly if you're like me. With the crowdfunding campaign, you could pledge your money towards 35, 120, and here's the exciting part, four by five, because bigger is always better unless you're giving birth. Luckily, Cinestill already managed to reach its goal for 4x5, which is a huge win for all of us sheet film shooters, because after all, large format is a solid distraction from the inevitability of death. Uh, I mean, large format is totally fun and you should shoot it. They're flying here. 400D in 4x5 is a game changer. We always need more stocks in 4x5, but don't let that distract you from the truth. We still wanna see 800T in 4x5. Cinestill, do it you cowards, F it. Do 8x10 and I'll get a Cinestill tattoo on my ass right next to the tattoo of Garfield eating lasagna. Now that's a pledge. Anyway, I was given two production rolls of 400D plucked fresh off of the vine or wherever they grow this dang shit. Big thanks to the homie Linus and the whole team over at Cinestill for the opportunity and I hope I haven't disappointed you yet because there's still plenty of video left. So anyway, Caleb and I headed out of LA and wandered around in the desert feeling pretty good, but not because of drugs this time, instead because of a new option for 400 speed color negative and all the possibilities that could bring, especially when I slam that son of a bitch into the X-Pan. This shot right here is contemporary art at its finest. A beautiful Fuji TX1 and a fresh, shiny new roll of Cinestill 400D, contrasted against a car that probably hasn't been washed in two years. Anyway, it's time to shoot, and it wouldn't be classic dumbass Jason if I didn't take the first shot with the video camera accidentally in the corner. First impressions of this stock, it's got a very nice, warm, but desaturated palette. It really seems to emphasize the yellows and reds, which I dig. It's almost color-wise like a faster version of 50D, but maybe less saturation. Well, if I didn't have tetanus before, I probably do now somehow from rubbing up against this wall. But hey, anything for an angle that's not really all that great. Actually, no, I really like this shot. The colors are perfect, and I'm always down for some sweet signature Cinestill red glow. Oh, that's gonna be a good one, I hope. So unfortunately in today's day and age, you can't just pop up with a new film stock and not instantly be under the microscope of the community. It's not like someone can just get drunk and decide they want to make film out of their garage with a hammer, some WD-40, and the spirit of innovation. It's an advanced chemical process and there are very few companies that actually still manufacture it, with Kodak probably being the biggest. So then what is 400D exactly? Well I think we all know at this point that most of Cinestill's film stocks are actually repackaged Kodak motion picture film stocks that have been altered, so chances are no one really likes me. In all likelihood, this is probably Vision 3 250D with the Remjet removed. I obviously don't know that for a fact, but I don't really see why it wouldn't be. Anyway, down the road was a super cool abandoned house that definitely stood out against the desert backdrop. We tried to get close, but a couple dogs from the neighboring property started going hog wild and chasing after us. So instead of getting a chunk taken out of my ass, or worse, my X-Pan, we GTFO'd the f out of there, but not before I took this shit photo. 
but it was for the better as we stumbled upon another abandoned house that looked like one of those super rare California desert hurricanes had blown through it, which made for a good subject, at least until we found the cursed doll. Don't like that. We didn't have time for the proper ritualistic burial, so we just accepted that whatever dark spell that was placed on us was probably going to be worth it for the photos. I think this shot is probably the best from that location. Warm brown poop tones make me pretty happy. This is the kind of shot that makes me think if I were in that conference room at Cinestill brainstorming names for this film stock, I definitely would have firmly pitched 400 daddy and never wavered from that. So why call this film dynamic and not another D word like damn or daylight, I don't know. Well, I guess I'd assume because it's probably quite versatile in any lighting situation regardless of color temperature and thus the word dynamic is possibly better suited. I mean, it says daylight and 5500 Kelvin on the box, so at the very least it's made for strong midday light. Along the way we came across a movie set that was being perfectly lit up by the sunset light. So these photos definitely have a presence of grain. I'd be curious to see how they'd look if they were shot at 320 instead of 400. Just to give it a little pinch of more light and maybe tell the grain to chill a little. It's not overpowering or anything, it's probably just a preference thing. By the way, these shots are all DSLR scanned and converted with Negative Lab Pro and have very minimal editing. So if you have a similar workflow, you can likely expect these kind of results. If this is in fact 250D, it's kind of interesting that this is being repackaged as a 400 speed film, about two thirds of a stop faster than the theorized original emulsion. I've heard from several people that removing the remjet from the film stock actually gives the emulsion a little more sensitivity, but I don't really know how that's possible. In all likelihood, someone probably made that up and I'm just dumb enough to believe it. It would establish a pattern though, because Cinestill 800T is actually 500T, which would mean that it's also being listed by Cinestill as two thirds of a stop more sensitive. But then where does that leave Cinestill 50D? Whatever, we can speculate all we want until we meet our early graves, probably from falling off a cliff trying to get the perfect angle. I think the real takeaway here is that it's nice to have another 400 speed color negative film in the market to help fill the gap left by Fuji Pro 400H, which we're all dealing with uh, in our own personal ways. Me, I chug two 40s back to back and then go get in a drunken fist fight with a dumpster behind my building, which drives the raccoons living in it totally batch Anyway, at the next location, luckily for me, someone planted a bush right where the shot was, so I had to fight it off to get the angle. Luckily, I've been hitting the gym, bulking up a bit, and it was fairly easy. Was it worth the hassle? No, definitely not. I'm ashamed to even show you this photo. However, this shot makes up for it a bit. If you're still watching this video at this point, not only do I commend you for your outstanding patience, but you might also be wondering what these red-orange glow blobs are. That's cute. You must be new around here. They're called halations, and the reason that they appear is because when you take a photo, that light is shining through your emulsion and bouncing off the back of your camera, back towards the ass side of the film, and being captured as out-of-focus light, predominantly on the red layer. I know that's a bit technical and confusing, but hey. That's life. I'm constantly confused. What the halations do tell us is that in all likelihood this is a cinema film that had the remjet layer removed for easy processing in C41 chemicals, which we already kind of covered earlier, so 
I don't know, maybe let's just wrap up this video. But before we do, I'd like to take a brief moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform, but that's not all it can do. If you're a creator like me looking to get your vision out into the world and build an audience, Squarespace makes that possible in any number of ways. A great way to connect with your audience is member areas on your website, which you can strategically use to create membership-only content and unlock an extra revenue stream. If you're a photographer like me and are interested in selling your prints, Squarespace has the ability to help you open up shop and manage tasks like low inventory as well as discount codes. I've been using Squarespace to host my own portfolio for a couple years now and it's been incredibly easy to add new work or make room for old work at a moment's notice. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, in summary, I will say that I think 400 ISO is actually quite flexible for a film speed. It's perfect for daylight and gives you just enough sensitivity for sunset and blue hour. Contrasted against a lower ISO film like 50D, it makes shooting anywhere at any time almost a reality. And even better, I think it looks cooler than Portra. I'd say that this shot is my favorite from the day. It's just so hard to beat those warm tones that I think we might see become a defining characteristic of this stock. Or not, what do I know? So anyway, hide your Portra, hide your Ultramax, because there's a new 400 speed color negative film in town, and it's swinging around a huge D. I recently witnessed an unspeakable pasta incident and now have it on good authority that there will be little to no fettuccine left by the year 2026.